In this video, I want to cover the difference between high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup. Huge, huge difference. Now, high fructose corn syrup, you may see it as HFCS. It's the type of sugar that's added to drinks like colas, other sodas, um, and it's found in many other uh, food products as well. High fructose corn syrup is highly different from corn syrup. Corn syrup itself is mainly glucose. It's mainly a form of branched glucose uh, chains, if you will, um, which is your blood sugar. It's, it's simply your blood sugar. It's the sugar that your body recognizes. The problem with high fructose corn syrup is that no longer is it just glucose, okay? It's been, uh, it has fructose added to it. Uh, now, if we look at table, something like table sugar, table sugar is about 50% fructose, 50% glucose, okay? That's sucrose, table sugar. High fructose corn syrup, they add so much fructose that it's even more fructose than table sugar. It's, it's not a huge difference, like 55 to 65 percent fructose, somewhere in that range. But it's more than table sugar. Now, why is that a problem? Well, fructose, like I said, glucose, the body recognizes. The body uses glucose as one of its main uh, fuel sources. Most carbohydrates eventually get converted into some form of glucose, which is what the body uses. Fructose, now, is completely different uh, from glucose. Fructose is a completely different molecule. The shape is different uh, and everything. And because of that, the body doesn't really recognize uh, what to do with fructose. It's not a sugar that it can uh, easily use so it has to be, most of it has to be converted in the body into glucose, okay? The problem with that is some of it does get into cells and it can sort of, what we say, gunk up uh, the cell because in the cell, it just doesn't use fructose uh, efficiently or effectively. It really has to be converted uh, into glucose. So you, if you have too much fructose, you can get all these, you know, fructose in cells and sort of disturbs the function uh, of the cell. The other issue is with body fat is that uh, fructose is a very low GI, low gastric um, index carbohydrate, meaning it's it doesn't mean it's slow, it just means it's very fast. It gets absorbed. Fructose is a, is a sugar. It gets absorbed very quickly by the body. Uh, the difference between fructose and glucose is glucose, like I said, the body can use. So when the body absorbs glucose, it goes directly into the bloodstream. It can go right to the muscles where it can be used as a fuel source or it can go and get stored and converted into body fat. Fructose, however, um, doesn't really go directly into the bloodstream, or at least most of it. Most of it goes to the liver where it eventually gets stored as glycogen, which is just branches of glucose, if you will, and then it gets released as uh, glucose as the body needs it. So the liver has to convert most of the fructose into usable glucose. The problem is, is that if the liver is already full of glycogen, it's got its, most of its stores and it doesn't need any more liver glycogen stores, it converts that fructose into fat instead. And that's the real issue with, with fructose for those of us who want to be dropping body fat. So we have to watch our fructose uh, content. Plus, you know, I'm a firm believer in recovering post-workout with high GI or fast digesting carbohydrates, carbohydrates that spike insulin because not only is that going to help you get more glucose into the muscles immediately after you train and recover faster and better, but it's going to help to bring more creatine and carnitine, which is two uh, nutrients you should be consuming post-workout, you should be getting an insulin spike to drive more of those nutrients into the muscle so that they can be put to work, okay? So I'm a firm believer in, in avoiding fructose, as much fructose as possible post-workout, which is why I recommend things like my 
post uh, gym dextrose. It's pure dextrose is basically another word for glucose, uh, if you will. It's the same structure, same thing, same molecule, pretty much. Uh, so dextrose it gets recognized immediately. Gets it right to the. That's why I recommend it. And that's why I recommend things like gummy bears, which have high dextrose content, very low fructose content. Candies. These are gummy bears and pixie sticks are two candies, and there's a lot of other Wonka uh, candies that use mainly dextrose or, or corn syrup because it's mainly glucose. Okay, this is different. Now, the corn syrup, when you see just corn syrup with no high fructose, that's completely different from high fructose corn syrup. Most people keep confused when they see corn syrup, oh, it's all bad, it's all, it's corn syrup's crap. So you look on actually my, one of my pro gym, labels you'll see in the ingredients label that they're corn syrup solids here in progym so people are like oh my god why how as a scientist can you use corn syrup and everything you know about no it's not high fructose corn syrup big difference uh, i appreciate your concern but you're confused okay corn syrup solids are just basically glucose okay it's used as flavor in in progym and it's such a minuscule amount. Anyway, even though it's a sugar, there's less than one gram of corn syrup in each serving of progym. And how do you know that? Well, you look on the supplement effects panel, you look at your carb content here, total carbs, five grams, sugars, two grams, okay? Two grams of sugars. Now there's also lactose, mm, very minimal amount of lactose in progym, less than one gram per serving, which is why people who are lactose intolerant can actually enjoy progym with no stomach issues. Less than one gram. So out of those two grams, somewhere under one gram is, is lactose, which leaves us only another gram. And actually the corn syrup solids, about less than a gram per serving, which you can confirm on the supplement facts panel. But again, the corn syrup is, it's not high fructose corn syrup. It's a big difference. The high fructose corn syrup here in Coke, like I said, this has fructose added to it. The other issue with high fructose corn syrup is some research has uncovered that due to the processing that they use to make high fructose corn syrup, sometimes mercury actually leaches into the product. So, uh, products on the shelves that have been tested that have contained high fructose corn syrup, something like over 50% have been found to be uh, contaminated with uh, mercury, at least minor amounts of mercury, which we know mercury poisoning can be a huge issue. So that's another reason to at least limit your high fructose corn syrup, but not, like I said, remember the big difference here is the fact that high fructose corn syrup has fructose added to it. Corn syrup is just glucose, basically. In high fructose corn syrup, not only does it have all that fructose added to it, which can be a problem for your body fat, for the functioning of cells, but it can also lead to some mercury contamination in those products. So avoid high fructose corn syrup when you can. Obviously, if you love Coke, you know, I'm a, I love, believe me, this Coca-Cola, the reason I have it is once in a while, my days that I want to treat myself, I enjoy a Coke. I enjoy a Coke because it's something that I enjoyed when I was younger. And if you follow a smart diet, you can fit this in uh, without it ruining your health, without it ruining your physique. It's just about moderation and being smart about it. But if you love Coca-Cola, you could drink this post-workout. I get a lot of people say, well, can I drink, you know, uh, Coca-Cola post-workout? Almost 40 grams of carbs are near 39, so it's a decent uh, amount of carbs to have post-workout. The issue, like I said, is the fructose content. More than half of it is fructose, which is not really going to give you that insulin spike that you want post-workout. But you will get, it is, Coca-Cola is a high GI carb because there's enough of the glucose in there that you do get some sort of insulin spike. But again, it, it's not ideal. This is good. Every once in a while, treat yourself if that's something you like. It's a good way to get in a treat. Keeps you sane when you're dieting. And yeah, you could be dieting and have an actual Coke post-workout or gummy bears or pixie sticks. What, what have you. 
Um, but like I said, limit your high fructose corn syrup, but don't worry about it. Like it has to be completely eliminated from your diet. Once in a while, everything in moderation, you know, really that's my stance. So I hope that clears up the difference between corn syrup, which is fine, and high fructose corn syrup. Big difference, big difference. Make sure to educate yourself. Uh, nothing really irritates me more than these, you know, uh, trolls that go on and, on uh, social media and, and try to uh, bash me for using corn syrup when they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Like I said, A, there's less than a gram per serving in there of this sugar, and B, it's not a bad shit, it's glucose. It's what your body uses. Your body has no issue with less than a gram of glucose uh, per serving of protein. Trust me. High fructose corn syrup, that would be a different case altogether. Um, but like I said, make sure you educate yourself on the difference between high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup before you're out there making yourself uh, look like a fool. And I hope this video helped. Keep spreading uh, the education around. Thank you guys in the gym army for making Gym Supplement Science a huge success. And I hope all this information has been helpful for you guys for reaching uh, your goals and keeping you inspired to keep training uh, and motivated to keep training. Look for more great stuff from me at jimstepani.com. Thanks, guys.